good afternoon uh, respected uh, chairperson uh, and panelist i am happy to see also professor abdullah shafi mojumdar and professor abu azam and uh, one amazing thing i could learn that is kuli syndrome and uh, i think i am fortunate i had several history of b vitab but i didn't have any history of mi so today i am going to present uh, one simple case i think that is uh, how precisely we can do angioplasty uh, my patient was uh, 44 years male he was having uh, class 3 angina despite on optimum anti angina medications he doesn't have any specific risk factor uh, his ecg and eq was normal so we went for diagnostic run uh this is his left system uh, we can see his uh, circumflex is uh, rudimentary and right coronary artery is dominant and we can see his uh, led is diffusely diseased from proximal to mid led and maximal stenosis around 90% at mid led so uh, we tried to uh, so we plan to place one stent in the led so we uh, close the lesion with one floppy wire Uh, one thing you can observe that uh, we were actually confused about in the proximal part where we will place the stent so we have uh, pre dilated the uh, lesion with a uh, 2.5 into 12 mm balloon at 12 atmosphere so as we were uh, as we were confused about where will you s s place the stent at the proximal led so we uh, went to the oct run and you can see this oct this has three marker one is distal one is mid and uh, one is proximal if you look closely and this oct catheter is moving uh, and this is the picture of oct actually why do we do oct uh, through this oct we try to uh, find out the distal landing zone proximal landing zone as well as the characteristics of the lesions and uh, this patients uh, you can see the oct run the oct is moving uh, so far you can see this lesion is, uh, is fatty fibro fatty plaque and there is the tiny calcification uh, minimal calcifications and there was a confusions uh, about us actually where is the uh, lesion how far extends in the proximal led uh, but uh, you can see the, the proximal led that the most proximal one that this one is uh, disease free so we could find out two landing zone the distal landing zone and proximal landing zone and this is how we have uh, we have Uh, measured the distal reference diameter and it was uh, 2.7 so distal reference diameter was 2.7 and uh, proximal reference diameter was around uh, 2.82 so uh, we have placed one stent that is uh, and length was uh, according to oct calculation it was 35.5 so we have placed one stent that was 38 mm that was a 2.75 diameter at the 16 atmosphere uh, we have inflated the stent balloon and uh, you can observe the tme3 integrate flow is achieved and we have post dilated the lesion and this is the basic so ag again we run oct and we we observe few things how far our stent is opposed uh how it was landed and and you can see we observe we achieved 4.7 uh mm square minimal stent area that is quite good and a position is uh, quite nice from distal to proximal one and uh, then how can we uh, how can we identify the position is good that is that the oct has a particular color dimensions and this color when there is a red color it it indicates uh, the position is not good but uh, the throughout the length uh, the position was good and this is how oct looks uh, you can see the starts of the stems as well see how closely the how uh, beautiful the uh, oct image is so this is the final result uh, you can see the timi3 integrate flow so my take home message is that technologies are evolving uh, we can use oct we can use ivas in this case we can we could also use ivas but oct you can see oct has a better uh, visualization uh, that's 2 minutes to professor left professor mg azam he is the uh, primary operator of this case 
And actually, uh, this is a uh, this is a, a day of another happiness for us. Which particularly, I am a people of South Bengal, and this breeze uh, makes me very much happy. And that's a day of our national achievement. Uh, thank you all for your passion sharing. Thank you very much.